Hello, all of you out there. Um, this is Audio Heads, part of Geeks Assembled, and we are reviewing this week a wonderful piece of uh, two stories in in a arc uh, about the second doctor, this time played by Michael Troughton, uh, mm -hmm. the son of Patrick Troughton, who played the first doctor or the second played the first second doctor in the TV show. And uh, this is sort of a, a split, a, a few moments between um, his forced regeneration and his uh, arrival on earth as an exile as John Pertwee's face. Mm -hmm. And there is a time fracture in there that is that that is uh, utilized by the Celestial Intervention Agency, and so off we go. Lee, what's your opening thoughts about uh, this this two part series called um, Beyond the War Games? Well, the the fan, the fandom, have always said or hoped that there was a, you know, made up these stories of this mysterious season six B. Six B, yeah, right. Where, where, where the second Doctor was just on the point of regeneration was sort of kidnapped and sent on missions for the Time Lords before he was exiled to Earth, and it's big finish. With the you know, with them being fans of all this, they knew about this season six B. Have took it mm -hmm. on their bills to create season six B. Um, as you say, with um, Michael Troughton playing his dad, um, and we have the first box set in this series with two two stories, um, where he finds out he's doing these jobs for the. The CIA, um, which I think is it's an intriguing and great way to bring back the Second Doctor with fresh new stuff, mm -hmm. um, and to honour Pratchett Troughton as well. Mm -hmm. way, and to get his son, one of his sons, Michael, to uh, not exactly impersonate his dad, but to have the uh, the essence of him there, because mm -hmm. it's not a full-on impersonation. It's Michael Troughton doing playing the second the doctor, second. playing the yeah. second doctor. Uh, but he has got he has got mannerisms of his dad. Mm -hmm. and his vocal, his voice uh, does have a similar tone as Patrick. Mm -hmm. So it works. Um. Yes, yeah, so I'm. I'm quite happy that they're doing this. Um, it's it's keeping the memory and the, and of this doctor alive and making the fans happy. As you say, there's two stories: uh, the final beginning and the wrath of the ice warriors. Uh, mm -hmm. The final beginning um, on the disc it says parts one and two. But on the disc, it's about four episodes. That's four parts. No. Four parts, but I think they're really short episodes to fit on uh -huh. one disc. Um, where he is sort of ends up in this snowy environment as he's dragged out of the vortex. And um, he's finds himself on Scarrow, of all places. Uh -oh. uh, um, and this is where this one is just like setting up the idea that he is going to go on these missions. What the Time Lords don't want pe people to know about. Uh, so that's sort of the thing of the final beginning. I mean, you've got in this you've you've got another actor in here who's well known for playing another Doctor, mm -hmm. Tim Trelawney. This is Silas. Mm -hmm. He plays uh, the third Doctor in, in the, 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 the new the third Doctor, Doctor series. Uh, which I like the idea of this that because it, it's it's said there that 
this season 6B is happening totally parallel to the third doctor uh, you know as the third doctor arrives on earth so because this is why you had all these like like uh, not flashbacks but visions of uh, the guy. third doctor talking to the brigadier and all like that um so this is happening. So that this doctor has been taken out of time. Uh-huh. So the third doctor is still on exile on Earth, but the uh-huh. second doctor is on these secret missions. Uh huh. So it's a great idea. So and, I like and, that. And it leads, and it leads from, you know, the second doctor being someone who you'd never assume would be cool enough to be like James Bond, to the third doctor who actually was. James yeah, Bond, but... because because that's who Ian Fleming based it on, right? It's John Pertwee. Am I right? Am I right? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> they did base James Bond on John Pertwee. <laughs> they did too. He didn't. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I mean, he he gets to glimpse his future as the Third Doctor. In all the frills, the frilly shirts, and I like that. Uh, so it's good, it's good that you know foreshadowing of that. Um, and then say so you get the second story, the Wrath of the Ice Warriors, set in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, it will be because the writer is Andrew Smith, who is Scottish, who is most well known for writing the TV episode for Tom Baker, Full Circle. Um, He's he's done many many big finish stories now as Andrew Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he was the youngest writer when he did Full Circle. I think he was still a teenager when he wrote that. Mm. And then he became a policeman. Did did all that. Then he decided, I'll become a writer again. Um, and he's saying in the rough of the Ice Warriors, you got Troughton, uh, Michael Troughton as the Doctor again. What we get? Come on, who do we get? Katie, Katie Manning. Yeah, Katie Manning as not as not as Joe Grant, but as um, uh, Lady Zelanda. Um, a, a very nasty piece of, of uh, ice. Well, she is an ice warrior. Um, Seriously, you, sassy ice warrior queen. Yeah, who's been in suspended animation for thousands of years. Uh huh. Um, also, you also it's a unit story as well. So, so then there's then there's John Coltrane as the brig. Oh my god! So, so you get fun. so you get another story with the second Doctor and the brig, which is a great team up. I mean, mm-hmm. it was great in the Web of Fear. It was great in the Invasion, the okay. five Doctors as well. Uh, but and you get this one as well. Yeah, yeah um, an enjoyable box, uh, an enjoyable box set, and a good start. So, because they're onto the third box set now, mm-hmm. a good start to this series. And for me, when you listen to Michael Troughton, you just, yeah, it's not exactly Patrick's Troughton's voice yeah. you hear, but he, as I said, it's there. You can hear it. Yeah, but it's, so not, can... it's not one hundred percent, but you can hear it. With with his with his oh my giddy aunt and all like that and he he gets that really well and all the uh, the sort of funny mannerisms that Troughton had as the Doctor he's got that got them off to a tee. Mm-hmm. So that's my well God that's nearly me reviewed them but back to you Susan. <laughs> uh, well, I liked uh, like the of course it was the the cast is. Um, is working with some of my faves. I like I like the uh, the celestial intervention agency. I think that that's fun. I I love that they are uh, considered to be rogue agents. Like there's no time lord who ever wants to even talk about them. And I love that uh, that. Uh, Katrona and Raven. 
I, I, it was, it's always good to get new uh new time lays and stuff so that was great not time lords whatever um and and uh of course nicholas brig as the daleks i was just wondering what you thought of the daleks in the snow the little daleks that were that well, were suddenly coming to life because because the intervention was happening well you know me i'm not i'm not a big fan of daleks especially on the tv because they have been overdone as i say again overdone and overdone um but big finish have provided us with stories what are far superior to what's on the tv uh mm. and they can write better stories for the Daleks and they're not so, stuck in a way that it's just the same thing over and over again. So is it did you feel like this was more a story about the planet Scaro and these 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 people who just happened to be sort of stumbling upon this, this Yeah it was uh, yeah to me it wasn't this, a Dalek this transformation. Story. Yeah it wasn't a Dalek story. It was, it was for me it how was long, how long does it take Raven to turn into a Dalek? <laughs> uh, well, well, Raven Spoilers. does re Raven does return in the other box set. So, um, but with what? With little spindly things in one big eye and sort of a floppy head. Uh, well, she didn't turn into a Dalek. Oh, right. It was the other. It was the other. It was the other guy who uh, th thought he was the emperor. Huh. But um, yeah, to me that that first story was just setting up the idea of what's going on. Uh, of right, we'll bang him here on this planet. He's he's just come out with the vortex, and he's not regenerated. We'll just give him this short story to begin with, and then we'll go into the Ice Warrior story, which is a full blown full yeah. pattern. Right. Okay. Uh, I see. Your, I the see that. Part was setting the box set up, I think, but it's still a yeah. good story. Because yeah. there's a lot of a lot of mystery in it. Yeah. And it you know, some some things aren't answered in this box set until further along the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. And, <laughs> and uh and then it was funny that that uh <laughs> that once once he kind of makes it to Earth, mm -hmm. um he goes there and runs into the brigadier for uh for uh a real uh inspection of these uh these forms that the, that came out of the uh that came out of like hibernation or something and they were on they were in these sort of underwater tubes and they kind of floated to the surface or something. Anyway, he did some investigating and discovered they were ice warriors. And that was fun. And the ice warriors were great. And uh, one of them didn't have their their suit on. So it was it was a nice warrior without this, you know, the, the helmet, like the, yeah. the smooth helmet type deal. And I, I like that <laughs> idea. And I also like the idea that that this was like this was when the Ice Warriors were trying to become a noble race. They were like Well they were a noble they were a noble race thousands of years ago, wasn't they? Well um, they were in Peladon. I mean in Peladon they really had they had the back of, of all of the con confederacy. Mm -hmm. the, the, there was a confederacy of of planets, and the the ice warriors were actually like the the ice warriors were like the the support network for the for the Alpha Centauri's, the the humans, the Peladonians, and the uh, and the other ones, the little guys in the the well the. 
every, I would, yeah, I would say every uh, Ice Warrior story that we've ever had, you have two war infections, don't you? Yeah. You you have the, the the ones what are good and noble, and the ones what don't agree with what the the other side are doing, and they're the rogue element, and that's what like the Peladon thing was, and uh-huh. and even it's it's gone on into the audios as well. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So, which is mostly just like everyday politics. Everyday <laughs> politics. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. And uh, and then the uh, with the ice warriors being um, being from Mars, like there was there was a. Uh, a definite like we don't want to talk about our ex- exploration of Mars too much, but the brigadier mm-hmm. mentioned it because yes. the third doctor is part of that recovery team, recovery seven team with the British Space Agency, which ends up like with, with struggles, you know, with their stuff and those ambassadors of death when they're trying to. Like form, like form a, a, a traveling uh, contingency back and forth to to Mars and to maybe some of the other planets, and that's when all of this this haywire goes on with the ambassadors of death. I like that. I like that the I didn't know I didn't know that these were running parallel. Yeah, with, with the said, dark. yeah. That's why they got the 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 the, the flashback of, of the third doctor and the brigadier talking about oh, those Salorians and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, all right. I could see that. I just didn't know that. So, okay. so really, I, now, I don't know. I, I don't know if they fit that two doctors in the six B season. I don't know. Oh. Huh. Yeah, so, that that, that was, was that was that was definitely a thing with uh, Jamie and and the Doctor. Yeah, because that were always I always wondered about that. Yeah, where did that fit in? <laughs> but well, while we're on the subject of Ice Warriors, you, I've got to mention because um, you know it was announced this week that your son Churchman had died. Uh, oh, recently. I know. Oh, my gosh. Um, the, the voice of Alpha Centauri. The original voice of Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri. Yeah. Um, oh. but, you know, she passed away. Um, it's only been announced this week, but she passed away in May. Oh. So, oh, but, I, so, but I thought we'd just uh, give her a nod there and a big, uh, you know, kudos to her for creating the voice of that character. Mm-hmm. So, Always, always connected with the Ice Warriors, of course. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, uh, R.I.P. So yep. yeah, the uh, the loss of his son was like uh, announced. What was it, Monday or Tuesday? Yeah. And I, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't believe it because, you know, she was, I just, I just had, you know, I, I assumed that she was going to sort of carry on. I mean, she, I, what, she was in her 90s, so what, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a ripe old age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, it was. Frozen. I think I've frozen. I think I've frozen. I don't mean to be oh, frozen. frozen. There yeah, we are. Not. I'm frozen. <laughs> can, you, can you still hear my voice? I can see you frozen. I can still hear you. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. Um, I I could do the the flick on and off of the, the camera. Oh no! Nope. Oh. Oh. No, it doesn't want to turn back on. Okay. 
called technology. Yep, called technology. There we go. Yeah. And uh, we have, uh, and so the <clears throat> the thing was written by uh, the 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 three stories uh, also were written by Andrew Smith, of course, like you'd mentioned. And yeah. Mark Wright, and uh, apparently Nicholas Briggs was writing some of it for the for the first story, yeah, the final for, beginning. Yeah, yeah. He must he must have wrote the bits for the Daleks. Must must have been, and then uh, yeah. So um, of course it was all. It's always good that Mark Culshaw. Can can recreate the brigadier's voice mm -hmm. or John Colshaw, excuse me, and uh, and then uh, Michael Trout. You know the the interesting thing is like he he kind of describes it like he he really likes to to have a light touch on the on the character. You know just speak the lines and do it with a because uh do it with a light touch because his his father had a particular way of speaking and he can sound like him but he doesn't want to be him you know that yeah. that kind of thing anyway it's a once you once you get into the story you, you... You do sort of forget it is Michael Troughton. You do, because as yep. I said earlier, his his voice has got the mannerisms of of Pat of, of his dad. Mm -hmm. So you can you, so you can relay them verbally, uh, just like uh, his dad did on the TV, and so as the story goes along, you, it becomes yep. the second doctor. Yep, exactly. So. And who who so, better who better to sort of recreate this character than than a Troughton? Agreed. I mean, it could have been David, but as, David as, did do do some, didn't he? He he's done some of the yeah he's done some of the big finish stuff. Um, and didn't but, he do some of the BBC stuff with uh, like? Back in the nineties or early two thousands, like he was doing some of the BBC Second Doctor audios. Oh, you might have been. I don't know. What reading okay. them? You mean? Reading them, yeah. Yeah, you uh, might have done, yeah. But but according to Nick Briggs, he felt that Michael Michael had um, vocally more of Patrick than David did. Oh. So that that's why he went for Michael. Oh, that's good. And he's doing a great job, as I say. They're onto the third box set now. Uh, oh. To me, he is, he is the audio second doctor now. I know Fraser has done it before. Fraser has really done, a, you know, so much good for the second doctor audio. Go on. But, but to have another, you know, if if you want, if you want Jamie to be in an audio with the second doctor. You've got for me personally. You've got to have two actors. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I know. I know the ones when Fraser was doing it. It was the Companion Chronicles, wasn't it? And yeah, they, that was yeah. telling the story. This is acting. Yeah, so, true. It's very true. Yeah. There, there's a definite difference between that and the Companion Chronicles. And yeah, so uh, anything that, that stands out, any any moments that you want to talk about? I think I've given some. Um, I do like the way. I mean, Big Finish has done a lot for certain actors and certain characters. Uh, I've mentioned about the Daleks being the stories. Give them more stuff to do, and that's the same for the Ice Warriors. I mean, 
back in the day on the TV, the Ice Warriors, you know, after Troughton's episodes, it, they just became the Peladon monsters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then they wasn't used again until the 2000s, a um, couple mm -hmm. of times. Uh, but in the audios, they've written sto stories what delve more deeply and give these creatures more meaty stuff to do. Mm -hmm. uh, like this one. Uh, and to have Katie Manning playing um, a high-ranking mm -hmm. ice warrior <laughs> with a chew in the scenery. Mm -hmm. yeah, but this is it. I, I, that's what I, I like about Big Finish. The, the do... They do actors proud and characters proud what mm -hmm. the TV kind of mess up. And and you know, the the, the story of uh, the story bits where they're they're out past Jupiter or out in Ju out near Jupiter. I yeah. mean with uh with in so many ways that's like the, the whole situation with the um with Arthur C. Clarke, he did all that stuff centered around Jupiter and Saturn, you know? That's fun. You know, I really like that. I like that because <clears throat> they don't only stay on Mars. These ice warriors have have a, a bunch of ships planted out or in orbit out around Jupiter. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's an enjoyable in a drum bill box set and um I was hoping we'd get around to it at one point. That's why I suggested it last week. Because I, I knew you hadn't listened to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep, it's really good. And and you know uh, I liked all the interviews at the end. They both had both uh both stories had interviews at the end, so that was fun. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was great, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, and the whole the whole thing with like the cylinders being in space, and then finding cylinders on Earth and stuff, and then there was like the they what they were up at a place called Cape Wrath in Scotland. So that's, that's what that's what they meant by the wrath of the ice warriors it wasn't that these ice warriors were it was a play on it's a play on words isn't it It was a play on words yes it was great and i like that that was awesome um yeah good good stories um <clears throat> what's your final say and score then well i enjoyed it from beginning to end um I, I do like the second story better than the first, but as I said, that's just the build-up to let you know what's going on with this box set. So it had to be done somehow, and that's how they did it. Um, so for me, it's going to be 10 giddy ants out of 10 for Beyond War Games. Yeah, and for me, I'll give it a 10. Uh... Uh, 10 Ice Warrior helmets out of 10. Um, I thought that it was just uh, really cool, so to speak. Um, I thought that it was uh, really far out, <clears throat> Jupiter, so to speak, and I thought that it was really, um, uh, it was really, it was damn inconvenient that they ended up going to Scarrow the first, the, the first time around, you know. Uh, <laughs> I knew that that might that that, that it, had they spent too much time there, Lee would have mm -hmm. been up in arms. It's true, too many too many dollar stories like the whole time war business. Like what is it, fifteen twenty box sets of of stories about time lords fighting Daleks. Yeah, it's Lee, it's Lee was almost ready to launch a, his own revolution. Yeah, I know the time war box sets. Uh, I think the time war's had its day now. Mm -hmm. Can we can we move can we move on from the time war, please? Mm -hmm. 
flogging a dead horse now. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, so uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to know what, what season 6B is, by all means, start here. This is the starting point. You can <clears throat> experience maybe what the what they would have fleshed out had they continued on with Troughton a little bit longer. Um, this also uh, this also parallels what they did with the the by generation of the the fifteenth Doctor because there are two of them and they're running parallel. But that's just me thinking along those lines too. I'm just trying to loop in Modern Who too. I can't help it. I try to I try to make this all one show, as 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 many sort of morphs morphs as it's had. I just you know, and then the other thing that I'd like to mention is the TARDIS being uh being like leaking dimensions. That was really cool. That was very much like um. Like Trenzalore and the, the silence, the silence of the fall or whatever. So I like that. I liked all that. And 10, uh, I swear, helmets out of 10. Please join us if you want to talk about these things because we do and we will, and you are welcome to join us. Um, and anybody who used to review Doctor Who stuff can join us to do Doctor Who audios on Geeks Assembled. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to have you. And, uh, yeah, thanks to the actors who put so much effort into doing this. I know Big Finish makes it seem easy, but I'm sure it's just a lot of work. And I'm, I'm just really proud and happy to, to have uh, you guys out there, you know, know that, uh, that we appreciate what you do so much. And um, I... I recently heard from Alex, my Alex, that there's a that, that there's a Roland Emmerich article about the rights and and copyrights of of the Stargate series, and I know that the Big Finish did all those audios, and I know that that's probably why that we haven't seen them start again, which is unfortunate. Because I know that they went into rights ar rights arbitration again for this, but apparently it's really hard. So too many too many chiefs, not enough, uh, not enough wampum. Um, I don't know. Like uh, I just think that it's it's pretty annoying, but. If anybody can do it, Jason Hay Gallery and Nicholas Briggs can. Okay, all that to be said. Um, yeah, we are. Uh, we if you if you want to join us to talk about it, uh, camera, microphone, Zoom, um, mm -hmm. and be available at nine p.m. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time, uh, Daylight Time, or whatever. Right now. And uh, on Sundays, and also uh, join join us on our social media. We've got a uh, cool Instagram, and um, our podcast has a X a YouTube channel where you can where you can subscribe and hit the bell notification. Ding ding! I know, I know, I know it now. I had to admit it in another podcast, so I, I'll admit it. Uh, you guys can't hear the ring, and um, so yeah, I've just been kind of digging the bell, hoping to hear, but no, there's been no hearing, and I admit it. Oh God, I admit it. And then, uh, <laughs> and then um, also. Uh, yeah, hit the like or the dislike because either way we're getting the, the algorithm paying attention to our wonderful show here. 
thanks to all the fans of Lee because you know you guys all make this really fun to do. Keep keep putting comments below and thanks for watching. Hey everybody, the Ice Warrior. Yeah, anyway.